Hi everyone, Christina from sharkpixel.com here. Just wanted to go ahead and show you a video representation of what my article is about this month. And for that, I'm going to show you how to create the skin smoothing action in Photoshop just with a different image. So if you're having trouble following along with the article, you can always watch the video and hopefully the video will help give you a visual representation of what I'm trying to explain in the article. So let's get started. First off, I'm going to drag my actions palette out here so that we can see it a little bit more clearly. If you want to go ahead and anchor this window to the side here, all you have to do is select up here and drag it over until you see the blue line. Then you can let go and it will anchor your actions palette or any palette against the right side of your screen. This can be really, really useful because you don't lose the actions palette if you're switching between programs or anything like that. I'm going to go ahead and create an action by hitting the new action button down here in the bottom of my actions palette. I'm going to click this and I'm going to call it bridal skin just to keep within the parameters of the article. I know that this isn't a bridal image. This is actually one of my images. So I know it's not a bridal portrait, but it's a good image to use as an example image for a skin tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and hit record. And the first thing I'm going to do is select the background layer and drag it to the new layer icon. Or you can hit Command or Control J depending on whether you're on a Mac or a PC. I'm going to double click that layer and call it skin detail and now I'm going to run a filter on it so I'll come up to the filter menu I'll go to other high pass and what I want to do here is zoom in to hundred percent of this image so that I can really see the detail of the skin I'm pulling the radius up to where I can see the filter start to affect the skin detail so for this one let's just go with 15. And if I go ahead and drag over here, you can see that this layer actually has some really funky color going on. We don't want that to affect the image. This layer is literally just to isolate and protect the skin texture. So what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to select this layer and I'm going to hit Command or Control U to bring up your hue saturation dialog box. If you'd rather use the top menus, you can always go to Image Adjustments and then you'll be able to get to the hue saturation up there. But usually to save time, I'm using as many keyboard shortcuts as I can. I'm going to go ahead and drag the saturation slider all the way down to negative 100 and press OK. And then I'm going to change the blend mode over here in the layers palette from normal to soft light. So now I've created the skin detail layer and what I want to do is create a skin blur layer that goes along with the skin detail layer. So I'm going to drag the background layer to the new layer icon once again to create a layer called background copy and I'm going to double click that again and call that skin blur instead of skin detail. Now I want to make sure that any blurring that we do on this layer is always editable and that I'm blurring this layer non-destructively. So I'm going to turn this layer into a smart object and the way you can do that is to go to your layer menu and hover over smart objects and convert this layer to a smart object. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and this box appears down here showing you that it's now become a smart object, this layer. Um, and now I'm going to blur this skin blur layer. So we're going to go to the filter menu, we're going to go to our blur, we're going to hover over blur, and we're going to come down to surface blur. So for this image, because it's a little bit more fashion-y, what I'd like to do is bump the radius just a little bit more. Let's see if um, 50 looks good. And let's take the threshold to 30. And we're going to press OK. Now that the skin blur has finished processing, what I'm going to do is create a group to put both of these layers in. So I'll come down here to the group icon in the bottom of your layers palette and I'll select create a new group. And now I'm going to label that group bridal skin. 
Now this part is very important. I'm going to click once on the skin detail layer and I'm going to move that into the bridal skin group. Now I'm going to click once on the skin blur layer and I'm also going to move that into the bridal skin group. As you can see, the skin detail layer is resting above the skin blur layer and this is very important because if the skin detail layer were, were resting below the skin blur layer, you wouldn't see the detail. Now, I think that the blur is a little heavy here, so what I'm going to do with the skin blur layer is decrease the opacity to 70%. Now I'm getting a nice play between the skin blur and the skin detail. Now, if I zoom out here on this image, the next step that I want to do is I want to make sure that the only places where this effect is being seen is on the skin itself. So I'm going to select my background layer, and I'm going to come to the Select menu up here at the top and click Color Range. Now that I'm in my color range dialog box, I want to make sure that skin tones is selected from the selection menu. If you're using CS5, you're going to select highlights instead of skin tones because skin tones is not an option in CS5. So I'm going to go ahead and click skin tones. I'm going to keep the fuzziness at 30, but for this image, the selection does a much better job if detect faces is off. So I'm going to go ahead and press OK. Now that I see all of the marching ants, I'm going to select the bridal skin group and click the mask button down here at the bottom of our layers palette. And if I hold down Option or Alt and click on this mask, Photoshop did a really good job of selecting what it thinks is skin tones. So I'm going to go ahead and Option or Alt click again to turn off the preview of that mask. And now we just have one step left. I want to make sure that in the shadows of her face, the skin smoothing is decreased just a bit. So I'm going to double click the skin blur layer here, which is going to bring my layers style dialog box up. And I'm going to take the blend if slider here from zero to let's say 50 and press okay. And now you can stop the recording of your action. and let's go ahead into 100% and see what this action was able to really achieve in terms of skin smoothing. And here's the before and after of what that action was able to do. Hopefully you guys can use this in your everyday workflow to help you speed up your retouching and hope you guys have enjoyed this short video.